So here's the thing. God welcomes everybody. Like seriously, like everybody. I mean, everybody. <laughs> That's where today, the story of the day of Epiphany is really all about. It's the story of how when God crashes into the world in Jesus, it's really about an invitation that includes everybody. God welcomes everybody. And, and maybe more than that, God doesn't just sort of passively let anybody, I suppose, who happens to come by in the door. God wants everybody drawn in close. God doesn't just say, well, the doors are open. I guess if you come in, I'll let you in. I won't kick you out. God wants everybody as a part of the new thing God is doing in Jesus. Maybe even sharper than that, stronger than that. God doesn't just passively want, but God actively seeks and draws and pulls all kinds of people in without regard for all the reasons they shouldn't belong, don't count, don't fit, don't fit the cookie cutter. God actively seeks draws, pulls, in fact, speaks whatever language is necessary, uses whatever means are necessary to get through to us, to speak our language, to meet us where we are, and draw us close. That's what the story of Epiphany is all about. So today is the day that uh, we tell the story of the Magi, the, sometimes we call them the wise men, or we imagine them to be kings maybe, but the, the, these, these strange foreigners come to see the Christ child. And, and this story is found in Matthew's Gospel, only in Matthew, Matthew chapter 2. And it really stands out because Matthew, when he tells the story of Jesus, most of the time he is solely focused on Jesus is the one who's been sent for Israel. He's been sent as the promised Messiah and Savior for the people of Israel, the children of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Jacob, those tribes have been waiting for so long for God to redeem and save and bless and rescue, who fulfills all those ancient promises to a particular people with a particular faith, a particular language, particular belief and religion and, and faith in God. And then all of a sudden, two chapters in, Matthew, of all the gospel writers, tells a story we're out of nowhere. Here come these strange foreigners. We call them magi. It's the same word we get the word magician from. So instead of imagining that these are necessarily well-respected diplomats or foreign dignitaries or even kings like the one him puts it, they're, they're people who dabbled in astrology, people who, whose, whose belief, whose, whose faith was that the stars guided the meaning of what happened on earth. And, and, and in that count, they're the wrong religion. They're from faraway nations. We don't know from how far away, but these are people who aren't part of the people of Israel. They don't know where to look for the Christ child. They just assume, ah, Israel, I'll go to the capital. That must be Jerusalem. And it turns out these foreigners who have the wrong religion, probably the wrong language, wrong culture, all these reasons that they shouldn't belong, shouldn't be acceptable, not only, not only do they figure out to come to see the Christ child, the way the story goes, God is the one who's drawn them. God puts this light in the sky, this star in the sky. We, we don't know how to explain what it is. Some people think it was an alignment of planets like we just lived through earlier in uh, December 2020 with a conjunction of planets. Other think it might have been a comet or a supernova. Whatever it is, God uses the means that these people will understand. Folks who were astrologers in this day see a star in the sky, and depending on where it is in the sky, what other constellations are around, it tells them uh, some, some meaning they interpret about what the, the arrival of a star means. And these guys were looking for signs about the birth of a king, and so God speaks in terms that they will understand. God uses something in the sky, despite the fact they've got the wrong religion, wrong culture, wrong background, all the reasons they are outsiders. And yet, they are invited in. God finds a way to get through to them. God doesn't just sit up in heaven saying, well, I sent the prophets. They should learn Hebrew and write uh, and, and read the prophets. Or uh, I, I sent uh, the, the law of Moses. They should read that, learn Hebrew, and then, then f come and, and find the Christ child that way. God meets them where they're at, speaks the language where they're at, and pulls them in because that's who God is, because that's what Jesus is all about. God not just rescuing a small handful of people who belong in the right group or have the right demographics or the right language requirement or come from the right stock, you know, the right group of people, but God's reaching out to include 
everybody from all nations, all places, all cultures and languages, and meeting them where they're at and saying exactly where you are, come, come, there's something good for you. And the gifts that they bring, well, you know how the story goes, they bring gold and frankincense and myrrh. God, God accepts these gifts. They are allowed to bring the talents, the, the abilities, the, 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 the gifts, the offerings that they have without blushing, without embarrassment, without God saying, I'm sorry, you don't really fit. You, your, your gift is not acceptable. You don't quite exactly understand what the Messiah is all about. No, their gifts are welcomed and honored. To be a part of what Jesus is about is about that kind of welcome. Not just, well, the doors are open, I guess if you find your way in, we won't kick you out. To be a part of the community of Jesus, the same Jesus who's worshipped by the Magi, means we're called to welcome people of all stripes, all kinds, wherever they come from, however they are, to honor the gifts they bring, and without making them blush or feel shame for who they are or where they came from, but just as you are, you've been drawn, you are welcomed, you are beloved. Yes, the gifts you bring are honored and cherished. We recognize and honor that you've been drawn by God as well. For whatever, ever baggage we feel like we bring, we're drawn, we're welcomed, just as we are. The story of the Magi is exactly about a God who meets people, <laughs> speaks their language, reaches to them using the imagery, symbols, the meaning, the, the, <laughs> even if they're the wrong faith, wrong religion, wrong background, wrong language, wrong culture. All those reasons that others might say, you don't belong, you're an outsider. And God just says, come, come, come. God doesn't just welcome passively. God wants and seeks and draws and speaks to us. So while there are lots of traditions about ways to celebrate or to remember the story of the arrival of the Magi who come and visit the Christ child, one tradition that you can easily do right where you are, at home, at a church basement, wherever in between, is a blessing, a, a way of marking on your doorpost an invitation for Christ's blessing for the whole year ahead. You may have seen this before. It's a tradition that has been sort of recovered in recent years in our area, but here's how it works. All you need is some chalk, so you can go to your local craft store, maybe you happen to have some around. I've grabbed some delightful children's chalk, and uh, the blessing works like this. It's a way of marking the year, inviting Christ's presence, and giving a wink to the story of the Magi as well. And you do that first by taking the the number of the year, the year 2021, and you break it into the first two numbers and it'll end with the last two numbers. So the first two numbers in 2021 are of course 20. So you start with a 2, 0, and then a cross, and then there are three letters that are used in this traditional blessing. C, M and B. There's a reason for that, it turns out. In fact, a couple of reasons. It's this delightful overlap of reasons that sometimes happens in church life. The C, M, B uh, is uh, the initials of the Latin sentence, uh, Christus, Mansionum, Benedictus, Christ bless this dwelling, this house. Um, C and B also are the initials of the traditional names given to the Magi. Again, we don't know for sure how many Magi there were. There were three gifts. Some people imagine that must have been three people. Who knows? But tradition, which is for whatever that's worth, gives names to these Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And while we have no reason to necessarily believe those are or aren't the names, it's a way of remembering that God drew people from far, far away with rather odd-sounding, different-sounding names, and instead of them having to apologize that they didn't fit in or didn't look right or didn't sound right or didn't talk right, God's love reached out and included them just as they were. So even though the names Caspar and Melchior and Balthazar are unlikely names you'll run across in the course of your ordinary day. The strangeness, I think, is part of the beauty of a story like this. So, again, I don't know when we get to glory one day. If it'll turn out we get to meet the Magi and those will be their names. But these are how they've been remembered. So we put C plus M plus B plus cross sign and 21. Take the first two digits of the year, C, cross, M, cross, B, from the Latin Christus, Mansionum Benedictus, or Caspar, Melchior, Balthazar, and 21 for the year. An invitation for Christ to bless this place, and a reminder too that the same Christ who was worshipped by foreigners from far, far away on the Epiphany, the same Christ is here 
and we ask for his blessing on us, on our doorposts, on our comings and our goings in church buildings and houses and our family lives and church life as well, but also that we're called to be people of welcome as well. So on a day like today, on the day of Epiphany, we celebrate not only that Jesus came, but that God thought it was good enough news to make sure everybody knew, not just folks in the neighborhood. I mean, it's good to know, I suppose, that shepherds who happened to be in the backyard were welcomed. It's great to know that angels were sent, but Matthew's story about the arrival of the Magi says that God doesn't just do something in secret and then only tell the folks who happen to be nearby but the God is about drawing everybody, everybody from everywhere, and you and I are a part of it. And if we're gonna be followers of this Jesus, if we're gonna be people who celebrate the coming of Christ, our calling then too is to be people who invite, who welcome, not just passively you're allowed in the door, but who actively reach out and tell everybody, 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 you are welcome. You are beloved. God is drawing you. You in all of your you-ness. Me in all of my meanness. All the, the quirks, the strengths, the weaknesses, the things that make me different, the things that make me like you. All those things, God meets us where we're at and pulls us to be a part of this new thing God is doing in Jesus. Now, that's going to be scary to folks like King Herod, right? You know how that part of the story goes, too. Herod is, man, he is frightened out of his boots. He's scared about the arrival of somebody else who could be the king, somebody else who might dethrone him. And so he's willing to use whatever means necessary. He doesn't even want to admit the possibility that somebody else could be the king and not him. He won't let go of that power. He's so frightened of the arrival of a toddler on the scene that he launches out a crusade to, to wipe out all the children in Bethlehem. But in spite of that, in spite of Herod's worst attempts to snuff out this new thing God is doing, God refuses to let our no be the last word. Whether it's Herod's no or your and my cross arm no, we don't want to let those people in. God refuses to let our no be the last word and God insists on a yes of blessing being spoken. If we're going to be people who put blessings on our doors, at our church, at our houses, wherever, that announce Christ's presence here, and invoke Christ's blessing, then we're going to be, have to be prepared that Christ is going to draw all kinds of people, and we're going to be called to be people who welcome everybody, people who want everybody to be drawn in close, people who will go to whatever lengths necessary to reach anybody and everybody in our community, near and far and all the way around the world, to come to know the love of God that's come among us in Jesus. That's what today is about. So delightful if your nativity set has camels and uh, magi with boxes and treasures and things like that. Good. Remember that part of the story. And remember that because God is willing to reach out to these people who didn't, who had all sorts of reasons why they, they didn't belong, and God reaches out to them just as they are anyway. That's how God's love meets us as well. So that without shame, without blushing, without having to say, oh, I apologize for who I am. Nope. Just as you are, you are beloved. You are welcomed. You are brought in close by God. And for us who know the story, that's what we're called to tell to other people. God wants you. God welcomes you. God is seeking, drawing, pulling you in close. And we'll find whatever language necessary to get a hold of us. That's good news, folks. Happy Epiphany.